Hey guys, and recently I was watching British GT, and one of my favourite things about that championship is its inclusion of multi-class racing, in this case a GT3 and GT4 cars. For those who don't know, multi-class racing is essentially when you have a set of faster cars and slower cars racing at the exact same time, ultimately meaning there are two or more races going on at once. For example, at Le Mans you would have the fast GTE cars, the faster LMP2 cars and the fastest LMP1 cars all culminating together to make three races into one. So for a fun little video, we're here in Project Cars 2, as I'm going to be trying a multi-class race not with sports cars, but instead with Formula 1 cars. I'm going to be driving this Formula A car, which is the Project Cars 2 generalisation of an early 2010s V8 F1 car, and the second class of car will be the Formula C car, which is the Project Cars 2 version of a generic Formula 3 car. So it's going to be a 7 lap race at Spa, since the Belgian Grand Prix is right around the corner against 31 AI cars where we see what F1 would be like if it was a multi-class championship just like the WEC. So without further ado, let's begin. So here we are at the circuit de Spa Francorchamps starting at the back of the Formula A cars as the lights go out for the 7 lap race, struggling to get away there dealing with wheel spin with these cold tyres, taking the inside line on the approach to La Source, passing the car on the left there as we come into the braking zone for this incredibly tight corner, playing it somewhat cautiously on the opening lap as we hug up to the apex coming through this first corner. Now coming onto the descent down the hill to the swooping uphill complex of Eau Rouge and Valion, moving to the right to squeeze past the slow car on the left as we chase the cars in front on this opening lap, trying to get into the slipstream of the car in front as they bring break into Eau Rouge, probably a wise decision when driving on these cold tyres as we climb up the hill through Radion and now make our way onto the fearsome Kemmel Straight, opening DRS and deploying curves to try and stay with the car in front as we fly down the Kemmel Straight, of course very different to the Kemmel Straight from my previous video where I drove at the historic layout of this same track. Anyway, going down the inside of the car to the left coming into Le Combe, almost ramming into the other car in front as we're now side by side coming through Le Combe. Have to let them go however, no point fighting a losing battle as the car on the right sends that pile onto space there, bit too aggressive on the inner curbs as we now come toward the medium speed of right hander of Bruxelles. Going incredibly deep on the brakes there, slight lock upon entry but still all is well and good as we cut back onto the racing line and exit the corner and approach the corner so infamous for not having a name that it's now unofficially referred to as No Name Corner. Nice and tidy through there as there's still a bit of a gap between us and the cars in front so we need to make sure we close that down as soon as possible. Now coming through pull on this long fast left hander gaining on the cars in front slightly. As we exit the corner running wide over the curbs on exit there trying to make full use of the available track to go as fast as possible. Now breaking into the right left of turn 13 and 14 as we move to the inside of the car on the left trying to get past but not quite on this particular occasion. The car on the left fends us off as we come into Stavolo as we approach the end of the first lap here at Spa. A very long circuit this is, in fact it's the longest circuit currently used in Formula 1 today, over two times longer than the Monaco street circuit. Running wide through that corner there, taking some liberties with the track limits as we chase the car in front for a possible overtake into the chicane. Now coming through a flat out left hander of Blanchimont, slowly but surely gaining on the car in front. Coming up to the end of the first of seven laps here at Spa, moving to the inside line trying to make a move into the chicane hard on the brakes maybe a bit too hard locking up massively but still keeping it onto the track and out of trouble to take yet another position now back onto the start finish straight bit twitchy on the exit of the chicane but nothing major as we fly past the pits to begin the second lap of this race now skipping ahead slightly as we come through a rouge on the second lap gaining massively on the car in front Coming onto the Kemmel straight once again deploying DRS and curls to try and make our way past the car in front Edging closer to the car in front, thinking about making a move into Le Combe as we move to the inside line, side by side with the car to the left, as we go hard on the brakes to try and get that move done. Still side by side, but the other car brakes much later and is able to hang on to the position. Quite switchy coming through the Le Combe complex, losing a huge amount of time to the cars in front, catching a ton of oversteer there, almost sending the car into a slide. As we now come through Puon on the second lap here at Spa, one of the quickest corners on the entire circuit and also one of the most fun, as we try and go nice and wide on exit there, coming into the medium speed right hander of campus. Breaking into the corner now as the car in front for whatever reason incredibly slow through here. With me going around the outside of the car to the right still side by side they really do not want to give up the position that easily as we get a much better exit than me to retake the position. 
Coming through with the right hand of Stavolo now, getting it all kinds of wrong on exit there. Losing lots of time to the cars in front as we now make our way through this almost flat out right hander. Running over the curbs on exit there as we chase after the cars in front. The long flat out run to the chicane at the end of the lap is in front of us now as we're still in hot pursuit of the cars in front. Coming into the quick left hander of Blanchimont now, very satisfying nailing this corner at top speed, turning into the apex here and taking the perfect racing line through Blanchimont. Breaking incredibly hard now into the tight chicane as the car in front is held up massively and I almost leave the circuit there trying to take evasive action. Out of nowhere, going around the outside on the car to the right and somehow getting that position done completely unexpected. Saying that however, they're still there on the right as we go side by side towards La Source. Coming onto the third lap as we come into the braking zone of turn one, much later on the brakes from the other car as we take the position for good this time. Now coming through a rouge on the third lap here at Spa, gaining slowly on the car in front as we make our way over the crust of Radion and once again onto the Kemmel straight. Going much quicker than the car in front now as I rapidly close the gap. Now moving to the inside line side by side with the car to the left down the Kemmel straight as the overspeed carries me away from the other car to take the position. Anyway, here we are back on the pit straight on the third lap, coming onto the fourth lap now, as we cross the start line once again on this short run to the first corner. Now breaking hard into the source, starting down the inside line, trying to make a move on the car to the left, hugging up to the apex, almost hitting the inside wall there, as we now make our way out of the source. The battle is not won yet, however, still side by side with the car to the left on the descent down the hill, squeezing right up to the wall on the right there, as we approach Eau Rouge, cutting off the car on the left as we come up the uphill right hander, taking yet another position. Now skipping ahead all the way to the end of lap 4 now as we try and chase the car in front, coming into the chicane. As we now come into the heavy braking zone trying to make a move on the car to the left, but braking way too early, almost coming to a complete standstill there as the car in front flies away from us. Coming back onto the start finish straight now on the 5th lap of this 7 lap race, in hot pursuit of the cars in front to try and make up any more potential positions before the end, and soon us Formula A cars should be lapping the slower Formula C cars in this race. Now skipping ahead once again to the Kemmel straight on lap 5 as we chase the car in front and saw pass coming through that subtle right hand kink to take one more position in this race. A long way to go to the next car in front however so we really need to get the hammer down and start going as quick as possible to close the gap to the cars ahead. Now coming towards the end of lap 5 and we're finally seeing the inspiration for this video as we begin approaching the lapped slower Formula C cars with the first being this car in front as they move to the inside line and let me pass because of course they are one lap down. Passing another Formula C car which again is the Project Cars 2 interpretation of a real life Formula 3 car as we make our way through the quick left hander of Blanchimont in pursuit of the cars in front. My exit is slightly compromised by the Formula C car there, losing a bit of time as we come into the braking zone of the chicane, but once again braking late and locking up massively and making slight wheel to wheel contact with the Formula C car there on the left, but all is still well and good as we come through Eau Rouge on lap 6, as we go around the outside through Radion to pass the lap Formula C car on the left, as we make our way into the Kemmel straight passing another Formula C car on the left there, but the next Formula A car for position is still a long way up the road, so we really need to make sure no time is wasted whatsoever if I want to make up any more positions in the closing stages of this race. Now coming through Campus Corner once again, surrounded by the slower F3 cars ahead as I try and make my way past the car on the left by going round the outside and successfully lapping them coming out of turn 14. We're in a bit of a no man's land at the moment with the cars per position both behind and in front being quite some distance away as we approach the end of the 6th lap here at Spa so it's going to be tricky to make up any more positions before the end. Now on to lap 7, the final lap of this race, we've lapped all the F3 cars by now so there's no concern about being held up in traffic as we chase our opponent ahead down the hill towards the legendary Eau Rouge. Now coming through Eau Rouge as the gap suddenly opens and I try and go around the outside of Radion, side by side as we make our way up the hill onto the Kemmel straight but the other car keeps on to their position. Much quicker than the car ahead however as I move to the inside line down the Kemmel straight, side by side as I almost push them onto the grass there as they do not want to give up the position. Coming into the braking zone of Le Coma as we send it down the inside of the car to the left, taking the position just about after that long fought battle. Now only one more car stands in our way on this final lap here at Spa, so let's see if we can make up that decisive position before the chequered flag at the end of this lap. 
Now skipping ahead a bit, and we've now closed the gap massively to the car in front. Only a tiny amount of time separates us now, as we come onto the final part of this final lap at Spa. Coming through Stavolo now, a little bit wide on entry, costing us only a fraction of a second, but in motorsport, the smallest amount of time can also lead to the most dramatic of consequences. Running a little wide on exit there as we continue the charge to the car in front, in hope of making up the final position before the end of this race in about 20 seconds. Coming through the quick left-hander of Blanchimont for the seventh and final time, slowly closing the gap between us and the car ahead as we come towards the final corner of this race. Now coming down the inside, hard on the brakes into the chicane, side by side on entry, squeezing ahead, but the other car still right beside me as we make our way towards the chequered flag. Much better of exit than the car ahead, however, we still have a chance to take the position as we take the inside line. It's going to be a photo finish to the line side by side as we win the race by the smallest imaginable margin from the car to the left as the race finally comes to an end. So there you go, that was a ton of fun, and I hope you found that multi-class F1 race at Spa entertaining, because, well, that was intense. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe, comment, share, and I'll be back in the next video. See ya!